This video is sponsored by BowtownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCGO code cards. You're looking for the latest booster packs in town or that specific code to complete your deck? This is the website for you. Use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5% of your complete order. Also, this video is sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a European platform that I personally use every single day. You can buy and sell cards to people all across Europe and it's easy to do so. So definitely take a look at CardMarket.com if you are a European player. Next sponsor and the last uh, of the bunch is going to be YourPlayMat.com. This is going to be the website if you need to create your custom playmat. Everybody wants to have a unique playmat. You can design and upload images onto this website and create playmats from the get-go. Definitely be sure to check it out if you're interested in buying your own playmat and use the coupon code zabdostcg 10 yp to of course get 10% off your next order. Anyhow, enjoy this video. Thanks for uh, watching through the commercials and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Peace! What's up YouTube, it's Zadlois TCG here and welcome back to another TCG video on my channel. On uh, this video we're actually going to be uh, talking about my top 5 personal picks for Players Cup 4 next phase. As you know we got qualified for Players Cup 4 and I still have no idea what to play in the next phase. So maybe you guys could help me out by uh, slapping uh, your favorite pick in the comments below. Maybe I can take it into consideration because all of these decks are very very good. We've already uh, experienced Players Cup 1, Players Cup 2, 3 and now the 4th one is on its way and uh, the next phase will start on June 9th. I also will be live streaming the event so uh, be sure to put that into your calendar because we're gonna have a blast I hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh, live stream for at least five hours if we're doing the entire thing until we are hopefully qualified and uh, got into the uh, top 16 of Europe so uh, I'm uh, very eagerly looking forward to that event so uh, what can we see is that my, one of my personal picks is always like Blasophilon it's like my, my go-to deck and uh, this is actually like tempos are in, in this specific build you might want to swap one Kremlin V for a Galarian Rapid HB. It is all uh, depending on personal playstyle, but this is just a very consistent list because of the fact that you have two Dedane, you have your Crobat, you have your Stellarish Jirachi, you have four scoop up nets, uh, you have four switches. So what you do is go for Stellarish every single time. If you wonder, there's uh, two Cherish Ball in here and two Communication. The reason that Communication is also part of this deck and you don't go for like three Cherish Ball instead is that you can uh, cherry pick uh, cards that you want at a specific time. If you're up against stuff like ADP, you want to get out your Rash's Art as soon as possible so you can blaze through the ADP instantly. Uh, a card you might think about is uh, swapping one switch for one Escape Rope. That might be uh, a nice solution to... Uh, just of course have the upper hand to just gust something of the active away to the bench. You have uh, of course your Cramorant and your Cramorant is actually very uh, yeah, awesome because it's going to be able to snipe the Dene and get you two prize cards. But also in uh, matches like Eternus you're going to be able to, uh, if you go second, immediately put up pressure on uh, the uh, Eternus that they already attached to which is very very cool. You have uh, of course Blastophilon being able to fire Ball Circus for endless amount of damage. 14 energy seems to be the norm in here. Uh, a card that might get you thinking is uh, Mars Shadow, the resetting hole from Unbroken Bonds. So you're gonna be able to get rid of Chaotic Swell. Uh, you do have four Giant Heart and you do have 14 energies, but sometimes Chaotic Swell and combined with a Marnie can put this deck down. Uh, it's also on my number five spot just because of matchup wise. Uh, we're gonna be going over to Trainer Hill. Trainer Hill, as you can see, has all the data uh, collected throughout the entire Battle Styles meta. So uh, that's TrainerHill.com. And as you can see, Blasophilon and Rashes Art, that's what they call it here. Uh, you can call it Tempo's Art, Crossophilon, whatever you want. But um, as you can see, uh, if you're up against Luke Metal, you're going to win. Uh, probably also going to win against ADP Zation. The reason that this percentage is not higher is that Zation ADP is the most played deck. And there's also people that are less skilled playing Zation ADP. So that uh, is taken into account that uh, sometimes... Yeah, the more people that play, the more people also uh, lose. And that's also the, the fact with Blasophilon. Sometimes it could be a hard deck to play, definitely with sequencing. So that's why this percentage should be higher. So against ADP Zation, you probably should be able to win because ADP Zation typically only plays
plays one Marnie and uh, yeah, that's gonna be very easy for you. you know, they also don't play reset snap. So in my book, you have a favorable matchup against ADP, against Z uh, Luke Metalization and against the uh, upcoming rise of Victini V Max. Against other decks, you can also win. It all depends on if your Mew is priced, definitely against the uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. If your Mew is not priced, that matchup is also pretty, pretty damn reasonable. And also Mew Mew Rillaboom seems to be very, very popular nowadays with the decline of Mad Party, one of your least uh, favorable matchups you want to see. You're definitely gonna be having an awesome time if you go for the classic, uh, yeah. Tempos are deck and this deck also is able to draw a lot of cards and the fact you have Stellar Wish, you can go for Orokorio, Dance of the Tribute, you can then go for Daddy Change, you can go for uh, a Dark uh, Asset of Crobat V, so lots of options available to you and you can uh, recover all of your energies with Fire Crystal. Typically, when I play Balsafalon, I uh, yeah not go for the Tempo Zard build, but just go for Raw Balsafalon with more energies. But in a format filled with Marnie, I actually, uh, yeah, most of the decks, the top decks, the top performing decks, think about, yeah, we're gonna be seeing them on this list as well. Uh, you don't want to be uh, yeah weak to Marnie, so uh, that's why this deck sometimes crumbles apart, but has high reward, high, ro high roll reward. Yeah, if you can get your uh, Welder on the first turn going second, blaze up some opponents with that double blaze GX, uh, you're gonna have an awesome time. And this deck also has reasonable outs against uh, yeah wall breakers, for instance, Altaria. You can one-shot them with Blasaflon, but also have access to double blaze GX, which goes through any effect. So uh, yeah, this is the list. And uh, the, the Galarian Zigzagoon also allows Cramoran V to snipe stuff like Crobat uh, V with Scoop Up Net. So uh, that's gonna be Spit Child 160, Galarian Zigzagoon and Scoop Up Net. So yeah, very uh, yeah, well-built list if I have to say. There's not a lot you, you would have to change, but uh, this is a list you definitely need to be prepared for. And uh, if you want to be uh, yeah, succeeding, I think it's probably gonna be one of these five decks that I'm gonna mention right now in this video will probably win Players Cup 4. Mark my words. And uh, just uh, throwing it out there, they're very good. Okay, now, number 4. Eternus. Eternus could not be more straight Eternus like this. Uh, this is not with special energies, not with weak gut energies. The, this actually decides to just go for, oh, if I'm not seeing a Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, I probably will win. That's the approach this deck is taking. With four copies of Galarian Zigzagoon, you're probably gonna have more pings than ever before. That means even if ADP players decide to play Big Charm, or if you're up against Victini VMAX, you can hit 310 damage output. 270 with Dread End. Of course, Eternal Zone allows you to have up to eight bench Pokemon. Slap all your Galarian Zigzagoons down and bang, out of nowhere, you get the 310 damage output. You have Eveldol to start off with, ideal pivot. Sometimes you want to be going second in specific matchups. So of course you can uh, be less weak against Crushing Hammer. You also are playing Crushing Hammer yourself. I know it's a, a crazy uh, frustrating card, but helps out against matchups where you want to be slowing the opponent down. I'm thinking about ADP. Imagine getting rid of their water energy, that's fantastic. Think about uh, you're up against a stuff like, uh, yeah, maybe a Victini VMAX and you want to be getting rid of their first turn attachment. It's gonna be helping you out because they cannot Welder and Boss in the same turn. Other uh, scenarios I can think of is against Picaram, where they're almost able to go for the full Blitz, uh, actually the uh, Tag Ball GX. You can lower them down for one energy, so they're one turn short of Tag Ball GX. But anyhow, you should be having a reasonable awesome time against all the tag teams in the format, which are still a ton. ADP, Picaram, Look Metal, uh, there's still a ton of them out there and uh, you're gonna be feasting on them. Even the Mewtwo variants, you can eat them all up with Dread End, slapping 270. And of course, with the four copies of Galarian Zigzagoon, even Mewtwo's with uh, a big charm are gonna get swooped away by the power of Eternus. And uh, this list is also running Phoebe. And that Phoebe means you're gonna be having an out against uh, Look Metal and the annoying Zamazenta V. Uh, with that, you can actually go for Phoebe, go through any effects, and uh, that should be enough to win yourself the game because uh, these specific decks typically run Look Metal, a Zation to draw cards, and a Zamazenta. So you typically only need to go to one Zamazenta, but there could be scenarios where, they, where they're not playing Zation down and they just go for two Zamazentas and a Look Metal. That's why Palpat is in here, so you can recover your Phoebe. Uh, just so you know, also in the early games, you might actually... Uh, 
throw away your Phoebe, so that's why the Palpat is in here. Another option for Palpats could be Cynthia Catlin, but that slows you down a little bit. And uh, with, of course, uh, this consistent build, you can slap everything down. Insta playable cards like Great Ball, Communication, if you have a Pokemon in hand, and Quick Ball will allow you to draw a lot of cards with the Dark Asset ability of Crobat. And uh, with 4 Marnie, you also uh, disrupt the opponent quite a bit in the combination with Crushing Hammer. If we look at the matchup spread of Eternus, we can see right here is that, uh, yeah, even against stuff like the Tempo Zard, uh, you actually have a great matchup just because they play a lot of two price Pokemon and you have a huge amount of HP. 340 is a lot. You don't actually win a lot against Luke Metal, but those Phoebe and uh, Palpat include will actually uh, upswing the matchup. You have a favorable matchup against ADP Zation. How cool is that? Uh, against Victini, it's like 50-50. It depends on your crushing hammer uh, luck. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is what it is. You uh, automatically lose against Rapid Strike. Don't actually try to patch up the uh, uh, the deck with weak guard energies. There's still people playing Fan of Waves. There is uh, other ways people can get rid of the special energies. So I would just go for straight Eternus. If you want to go Eternus, Play Eternus and just pray to God that you don't come across any Rapid Strikes. That's how you have to uh, go with playing Eter nowadays. You have favorable match against Picaram, all the Mewtwo's you win against, and even Mad Party. So Eternus is definitely a, a very, very solid pick for the next phase of Players' Cup 4. Okay, moving forward. Number 3. Can you guess it? Ta-ta! <laughs> yeah, it's the deck that everybody loves to hate. It's ADP Zation. If you want to know, there's eight metal energies in here. So uh, we're just going to have to uh, get rid of the sponsor or just move it around a little bit. We're going to be putting it back later. So uh, as you can see, ADP Zation. This is a deck that if you don't know which deck to take to the next phase of Players Cup 4, this is going to be the deck for you. And the reason for that is that it has 50-50 matchups across the board. It all depends on if you find your energies onto your ADP quickly enough. The uh, main strategy, of course, as you can see, four energy switches, four metal saucers, and uh, that's going to be very easy for you to just get an energy in the discard pile with Quick Ball or Research or the Dene, and then go for metal saucer, energy switch that energy from the Zation or Mawal, whatever, <laughs> onto the uh, ADP, and then attach a water energy. You'll be able to find water energy thanks to energy spinner, and bam, out of nowhere, you're going to be able to use Alter Creation on your first turn going second. Preferably, you probably still want to go first with this kind of a list so you can uh, have a little bit of breeding era. So we can just attach to your ADP and just go for an Intrepid Sword. This list also has, of course, an Oracorio in here just because of the high amount of uh, Cherish Ball. This will allow you to just, if uh, the opponent uses something like Reset Stamp or a Marnie and knocks out your ADP, you can still have a way so you can dig for a Saucer Saucer attachment so you can still get prize cards after using Alter Creation because nothing is. More, more terrible for this deck than getting knocked out after using Alter Creation. And uh, there's only a few decks that are able to do that. Uh, we, of course, have Dread End of Eternatus, VMAX. There is, of course, uh, stuff like Blasaflan, which can blow up on you in one turn. Or maybe a Reshazar with Double Blaze. There's a lot of uh, things that can actually one-hit KO ADP in specific cases. But decks that are not able to do that, you should be able to uh, win regardless. If you just draw a little bit uh, well enough. So uh, also with Intrepid Sword, you might have energies attached to your Zation instantly because of the effect of it. So uh, looking at the top three cards of your deck, attaching energies you find there. So that's crazy. Uh, what else can we see is that the Kyalex Well and Marnie, there's only a one-off count uh, in the uh, ADP lists in general. You specifically just want to uh, dig for uh, your win con, right? So you have Dedene, you have Research, that is your main ways to dig for cards. And as soon as you find your Energy Switch and Saucer and all that good stuff, you probably will be good to go. Cards you can also dig for is Great Catcher because not only do you run four boss in combination with Eldegoss, you also have the Great Catcher as an additional gusting out. And uh, this deck wants to go for Alter Creation, preferably ADP is still alive, attached to the ADP, Great Catcher, something like Dedene GX, or maybe Boss's Orders, a Crobat, or an Eldegoss, or another two prize Pokemon in general. Use the Ultimate Ray, take three prize cards because Ultra Creation allows you to take an additional prize card throughout the rest of the game. I know it's ridiculous, it's still out there, it's not gonna go away, it's only rotating on uh, in September, so for now, very solid deck, and uh, it does what it needs to do, it's just awesome uh, to just win the game in four turns if you are the person playing this because that means you don't have to overthink too much. This is an easy to play deck, not a lot of brain power behind it. Just gonna go for Intrepid Sword the first turn, then go for Dedane, Research. Do I have everything? I have everything. Boss's Orders, and bam. Uh, on the second turn, you're gonna be able to take three prize cards. 
I know, it's ridiculous. Uh, now let's check out the matchup spread on trainerhill.com. ADP, as you can see, 50-50 against uh, Luke Metal, 50-50 ADP, of course, 50-50 Victini VMAX. That's almost everything is 50-50. It all depends on how well you draw. The only uh, upside is that you automatically win against Mad Party. Not automatically, but most of the time, 63% of the time. Etern, this is still a 60-40 matchup, but it all depends on how quickly you can gust up their Crobats. Maybe they, uh, yeah, with a beat and they are not able to uh, get your uh, uh, yeah ADP knocked out on their second turn. So that's going to be the way you can win games. You can also use Mawel uh, through your favor to be able to slow down the Eternus player. So uh, that means you can sometimes cheekily snap down their Galarian zigzags on uh, their opening hand or maybe their Crobats. And that means you don't get pinged with Headbutt Tantrum and they're also not able to draw cards with Crobat V. So use Mawel Jax against that matchup. And uh, you can also go for Marnie in combination with uh, the Mawel. I know blind Mawels are not like fun. But it's a, a way you can win upswing uh, with Eternatus. All the rest is 50-50. So uh, yeah, if you just say like, I don't really want to overtake the matchups and stuff. This is the deck for you. Then, number two. Ta -ta -ta -ta. This is seen a huge increase in play. I know Pedro Torres is a huge fan of this specific list of Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. As you can see, of course, there are four copies of the Rapid Strike Energy in here. And what can you see is that you now have capture energies. So what you want to do on the first turn, set up an army of Chinchino. You can even go for Snorlax with Gormandize if uh, you want to be drawing cards because this is a little bit less fragile than a Jirachi, leaving it open in the active, just like Jirachi engine of uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Only one the Dani GX in here because your main draw power comes off the make do of Chinchino, allowing you to draw two cards if you're able to discard one card from hand. Very, very powerful because this is going to be one of those lists that if you're able to get a huge army of Chinchino, you're going to be having a good time. Not only you're hitting weakness against uh, Eternatus, you also hit weakness against Pikaram. I know Pikaram is playing Mewtwo, but we can shut down Mewtwo with the Shadow Box ability of Mimikyu. So uh, yeah, be careful of, of course, uh, yeah, Rapid Strike if you're playing Pikaram or Eternatus because... This list has been performing quite well and seems to be the most popular build of Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. So uh, it is probably the list that actually Tord Reckliff used in Players Cup 3. So uh, that means that uh, this has caught on a little bit late in the Battle Styles format. And uh, people actually were uh, opting to go for like the Fighting Dojo engine time and time again just because of the numbers. Sometimes if uh, one of your Pokemon got knocked out, you can go for a Guild Trust for 190, which is of course awesome on stuff like Victini. Also awesome on stuff like Heatran GX, but uh, this is without um, yeah Fighting Dojo instead. You have Cheryl's to upswing the prize race. You get slapped into your Urshifu, then you Cheryl it away. That's how it is. And you can find Cheryl quite easily because of the fact of Make Do. You have your Phoebe against, of course, Zamazenta, but also could be super helpful against Decidueye. I know it's going to be an open deckless tournament, so Decidueye players probably going to be getting out uh, multiple Decidueyes when they see you're playing Phoebe, but it could sometimes help out. Now there's also some reset stamps, so you can stamp them to low hand size. You have some bird keepers to get your Snorlax out of the active. And of course, uh, reset the attack effect of Gale Trust. So you can go time and time again for the 150 damage output for one energy. And Cheryl is super huge. If decks are not able to one hit KO you, you're going to have an awesome time. And seeing as this list is only running one two prize support Pokemon, you're also not that weak against ADP, to be honest. Because, uh, yeah, they typically will need to go through... Uh, yeah, one Dedane and then at least one Urshifu VMAX. And with a high amount of Cheryl, they're probably not going to be able to knock out the Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Uh, with Mewtwo Mind Report, you're going to be able to get, of course, some supporters back. So you can get back another Phoebe, which, now that I think about it, could actually swing the favor against the Sejuan Altaria and, 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 and definitely. So as you, as you can see, you technically would be able to get one Phoebe down, then Mewtwo Mind Report, second Phoebe, and then four copies of Scuba. So yeah. Your uh, wall breaker decks, you automatically win against those, as well as, of course, Zamazenta being annoying. So that's how cool it is, because with Make Do, you automatically draw what you put on top of the deck. So you can go Mewtwo, put the Phoebe back on top, Make Do, get it instantly, play it again. Scoop Up Net, Mewtwo, and yeah, you can go in circles. Uh, also with Scoop Up Net, you have Giratina. As mentioned, you can be able to get rid of special energy. So even if you would be playing special energies in your Eternatus list that we talked about the previous uh, yeah, two decks ago, that means uh, they could still get rid of the weak guard energy. So 
personally would not play uh, Weguard Energies and Eternatus. I just hope you with a deck like this because it, it seems very uh, solid because you have Quick Balls, Lava Balls, you have Communication. So they probably will have a second turn Urshifu swinging into for you for 150. You could be attacking it, but they could be healing it off instantly with Cheryl. And there's two Cheryls in here in combination with Mind, Mind Report Mewtwo. So they technically could be healing the entire game, which is super powerful indeed. With G-Max Rapid Flow 120 to two of the opponent's Pokemon, wherever you choose. Very, very strong. You can get rid of like uh, a Dedane and then uh, yeah, one prize Pokemon, for instance, Galarian Zigzagoon or Jirachi or whatever. So I think it's very strong. You can also hunt after Crobats very nice and easily with, of course, as mentioned, only two Bossasaurus, but you can get more thanks to Mewtwo Mind Report. So it all depends on the, the matchup, to be honest. And uh, if we take a look at the matchup spread on TrainerHill.com, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX wins against uh, uh, Tempozard. Wins against Eternus like like 75% of the time. That's crazy. Uh, also is able to have a favorable matchup against Mad Party because of the fact that if they don't find Mew on time, you can get multiple KOs on their weak HP Pokemon. And uh, that's super duper good. Uh, now that I think about it, I think uh, in this list, it is not playing Jirachi GX. So Mewtwo has seen a decline in play. I know, but I personally would change one Cheryl for one Jirachi GX, just in case. So uh, as we were talking, uh, you don't want to be seeing Mewtwo's as you can see here. Uh, you also went against Picaron quite convincingly, super duper nice. And uh, there's of course the way you can win against all, uh, yeah, against ADPization as well. So it has great matchups, just have to uh, dodge the Mewtwo's I guess. That's uh, all up to you. So it's like a lot of rock, paper, scissor format. We have of course the Mewtwo decks, Rapid Strike, Urshifu, and then Eternus, and they go in circles like that. Then, my number one pick, what will it be? What do I personally think will win Players' Cup 4? It is Pikaram. Yeah, Pikaram is here. It is, in I know what you're gonna say, again with the Pikaram. Pikaram has been performing super well these last couple of weeks in the late uh, stages of battle styles. People are familiar with the deck. The deck is strong. You can go for Marnie's, four copies of Marnie in combination with Crushing Hammer, in combination with Codex. Well, super bonkers to be honest because a lot of decks are uh, gonna be crum crumbling with that. All the Welder decks uh, are afraid of this just because yeah, Welder decks typically need to find uh, yeah, Welder in general, and if they are not able to find Welder, and if they got like Crushing Hammer, they cannot go for like a double blaze for 300. Heatran plays are still playable, uh, I know, but they will need to find everything. And uh, with Marnie to a low hand size or reset stamp to like one, that is the case because they probably will need to one shot Bolton and then attack team. That means they can st you can stand them easily to one card. And then the one and only Tandem Shock comes into fruition and boom, they're paralyzed. You only need to take uh, your last prize cards. They cannot do anything. They pass, you win the game. So very strong late game. I cannot stress that out. Also strong uh, early game with Marnie and Crushing Hammer. You of course have Energy Acceleration with Dance of the Ancients of Tapu Koko Prism Star. And of course the Electrify attack of Bolton V. You set that personally up onto your Mewtwo in most uh, situations because Mewtwo is a little bit more versatile. Just have to be uh, careful of power plants. I know this list is only running one Cadex well. You might bump it up to two if you don't like the Stealthy Hoods. The Stealthy Hoods are in here just to shut down the ability of Shadowbox Mimikyu because Mimikyu shuts down Mewtwo and yeah, that's something uh, you don't wanna be seeing. So that's why you have the Stealthy Hoods in here. Uh, we have of course um, the boss's orders which you can get back with Eldegoss. So uh, with three boss and an Eldegoss, you have plenty of gust and gusting hours and sometimes with gust, and Tag Ball GX, you can get four prize cards. So uh, that means you can just take something on the bench, leave a Dedenne on the bench as well. Then Tag Ball GX, take a lot of prize cards with that. With four Bolton, you ensure you most of the time start with it. And you have Air Balloons to also get it in the active position if need be. With, uh, of course, the Dedenne, you're gonna be able to get your uh, Picaram in the discard pile. So you uh, can uh, start accelerating energies to the Mewtwo because Mewtwo is gonna be copying the attacks of the Picaram in the discard pile as well as Raichu and Alolan Raichu Tag Team GX. So this is going to be the way this deck operates. And you have speed lighting energy to draw yourself uh, two cards if you are just attached to it. So very, very good. So drawing two cards with speed lighting, the Dene drawing, uh, discard your hand, draw six cards, research again, discard your hand, draw seven cards. So you have a very uh, crazy dick potential if you want to be looking for a specific card like reset stamp. And uh, I still think this is a very, very strong list for sure. Now let's check out some of the uh, matchups here. Pikram has been around forever and uh, it's gonna probably gonna be dominating again. 
this season and the Players' Cup for yeah, uh, Luke Metal, they say it's an unfavorable matchup because uh, of the uh, high amount of people playing Picaram and most of them, uh, yeah, the, not all of them are like super in, uh, like experienced into the Luke Metal matchup because I think it's still 50-50, depends on, if you know how to beat Luke Metal, you're probably gonna be beating Luke Metal because you can uh, safely hang on to your resources uh, against ADP. You should have a great time because of Crushing Hammers and Marnies and all that good stuff and taking multiple prize cards because they play high amount of the Dene. Against Victini, yeah, Victini has saw a huge increase in play with that Galarian Rapidash, uh, V include, but with Picaram you automatically win that, there's no way they can win because they typically hunt after V Pokemon. Rapid Strike, as mentioned, is your only loss. I know we're playing the Stealthy Hoods and the Mew too, but uh, I don't know if this is, uh, yeah, the mathematically right, 37% win rate, I think this list with the Stealthy Hoods has a higher win rate just because Mewtwo, even if they have Shadow Box Mimikyu, you slap down the uh, Stealthy Hood onto a Mewtwo and then knock out the Rapid Strike Urshifu, so you patch that up quite nicely. You have, of course, the way against other Mewtwo lists that you can use your own Mewtwo, so that's super nice. You don't want to be seeing Mad Party at all, but Mad Party saw a huge de decline in play. Now that I think about it, Mad Party could be a counter pick since it can win against uh, Picaram, it can win against Rapid Strike Urshi, so uh, who knows? Maybe Mad Party could be, uh, surprise some people and also win his house against Tempo Zard. So yeah, that is my personal top 5 decks that I personally think that one of these decks will win Players Cup for next phase. Anyhow, uh, this was another video on my channel. If you are a fan of the channel, be sure to let me know by destroying the hell out of the like button. It helps out in many ways and... Um, yeah, we're posting daily content on the channel, so you're gonna be learning a lot. Chilling Ring comes out on the 17th of June on the TCGO program. So uh, we're gonna be having some fun there. There's a booster box on its way, so we're gonna be having some physical product openings for Chilling Rain. And uh, Players Cup 4 is also on the, uh, is it the 18th of June? Let me just check that out real quick. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on the 19th. Yeah, on the 19th of June, we will be playing Players Cup 4 next phase. Still don't know what to play. I'm uh, gonna be playtesting quite a bit. Hopefully, we're doing, uh, we're gonna be doing well. Uh, and there's two Players Cup where I did very well. I think there's one uh, top 32 and one top 16. Don't know how it's gonna go this time around, but uh, yeah, you can, you can, you'll be able to follow it live on the channel or on my social media platforms: facebookcom zadluscg, twittercom zadlus. TCG, that's yeah, you can find it easily. So uh, be sure to check it out on all social media platforms. And uh, yeah, this is it for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed my personal top five picks and uh, a detailed review on the matchup spreads. And uh, with that, I'm gonna leave you guys. Hopefully, you guys had a blast. Uh, be sure to check out our sponsors, PotownStore.com, the best place for TCGO code cards. I personally uh, would use that when Chilling Rain comes out because uh, Chilling Rain is going to be uh, blasting new life into the TCG and it's going to be the quickest way to get codes. You can get 5% uh, yeah, off your entire order and uh, the best way is just to buy a bulk price of 50 Chilling Rain codes up on PotownStore.com. You can also get promo cards like Eternatus, Zation, whatever you need to start playing competitively. Also, go check out cardmarket.com, European platform where you can buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day to get rid of cards that I don't need anymore to just buy cards that I want for new decks and post rotation stuff. Anyhow, uh, the last sponsor that I want to mention is yourplaymat.com. Perfect website if you want to be designing and creating your own custom playmat. It's nothing better than playing uh, on a unique playmat when real life events uh, resume again and uh, yeah you can be you're gonna be able to create one with 10% off your entire order by clicking the link in the description below so uh, if you click that link you're gonna have 10% automatically uh, if you just order a playmat on yourplaymat.com anyhow have yourself a fantastic rest of your day i'll see you guys tomorrow with more pokemon tcg epicness peace